Does pushing backward and forward on your seat cause it to slide as you see here? If you've adjusted the seat all the way forward or all the way back and it still slides, the procedure shown in this video will not resolve the problem you're experiencing. Here you see the actual defective part once it's been removed from the seat. We'll use this information in a few minutes to help you understand what you're seeing. Just by removing this cover on the side of the seat, we'll be able to look in one more place to verify that this problem is what's affecting your seat. The last of the four screws is on the back of the seat. Note that you won't be able to remove the bottom cover on the seat until you've raised the seat all the way up. After doing that, it comes off easily. There are two holes in the top of the seat rail that allow you to inspect the part I showed earlier. Use the seat adjuster to move that part into position below the holes. You should then be able to see that the block on the worm gear is loose in the silver part that it sits in. Assuming you do see this behavior, let's continue with the repairs on your seat. In order to fix your seat, you'll need to replace some shims that are no longer present in the seat rails. You can obtain a kit which contains a full set of shims to repair two seats along with instructions for what I think is a very reasonable price by going to www.gmseatrepair.com. Let's remove the seat. There are two large external Torx nuts holding the front of the seat down and in the back there are two smaller uh, external Torx bolts. The bolt on the inside of the vehicle is under this plastic cover which is removed by lifting just a bit and twisting. To remove the bolts in the back you'll need an E14 external torque socket. This is what those bolts look like once they're removed and in this vehicle you can see that the bolt goes all the way through the floorboard. I didn't have an external torque socket that was this big, so I found that a standard 15 millimeter socket would work just fine on these nuts. I had already loosened this nut, so all that remains is to take it off. At this point, make sure that the seat is adjusted all the way back so that the adjuster is at its stop. Now we'll proceed to remove the electrical cable under the front of the seat. You do that just by pressing on a lever on the plug and it comes right out. You'll want to put something on the ground to protect your seat and then it's ready to lift out of the vehicle. I suggest putting the nut back on this bolt coming through the floor so that it's not so likely to poke a hole through your seat. And this is what the bottom of the seat looks like. These two small screws are what holds that silver metal block into the bottom of the seat rail, so we want to remove those. You'll need an E10 external Torx socket to do that. With these bolts removed, the rail can slide freely. Move it so that you can see down through a hole to where the worm gear goes through its support. Note that the silver metal block is all the way forward against that support. We have to return it to this position if the left and right rails are to be synchronized. At the back end of the seat, you'll see the one bolt that holds the worm gear in place. 
That bolt goes into a nut on the other side of the rail. You'll need a 15 millimeter wrench to hold the nut. The box wrench works better on this. And you'll need an E12 external torque socket on the bolt. You can now grab that worm gear and just pull it out. Notice that the silver block gets caught on some of the bolt heads sticking down into the rail. But by pulling the rail further back, you'll be able to pull the block out without having to remove any additional bolts. And here's the part that we've been trying to get out of the seat. Notice that, as I showed before, it seems to be missing the shims that it once had. In this picture, we can see that there's kind of a peak or a little triangle shape on the top of this block. Of course, the first thing we want to do is to remove the worm gear from the block so that we can clean this all up. Note that the bottom of the worm gear follower block is just flat. It does not have a little peak on it. This is what the block looks like after you get it all cleaned up. Note that there are not many threads here and the block seems to be fairly light metal. So the bolts that you will put in here will not take much torque. You can see a letter L on the top of this block, which means that this block is made to work with left-handed threads, which this particular worm gear is. It's now time to install those shims that you obtained from gmseatrepair.com. Install one shim on each end of the black worm gear follower block inside the silver block as indicated in the instructions that you received. Note that the worm gear follower block should be installed with the angled side up. Once you've completed that, reinstall the worm gear into the block assembly. The next thing I did, of course, was to re-lubricate the parts that I cleaned up. Now what we want to do is to turn the block so that it is all the way forward on the worm gear. This is essential for properly synchronizing this rail with the other rail on the other side of the seat. At this point we have to remove the shaft that connects the motor to the worm gear. We have to do this so that we're free to turn the worm gear during installation. The destruction of the original shims that were in the block seems to have left a lot of debris that you'll want to clean up. You can also move the rail and use the holes in the rail to find other places where this debris exists so that you can get most of it out. After finishing with that, it's time to reinstall the worm gear. You'll need to move the seat rail so that you'll be able to get that block past the bolt heads that are inside the rail assembly. At this point, you should find that the hole in the worm gear is too far back to line up with the hole in the rail. This is for two reasons. The first is that the front of the worm gear does not easily go into its support, and it will need some help doing that. I suggest that forceps would be a good tool to use for this. Even after you've put the front of the worm gear into its support, if you've turned the block all the way forward, as we earlier discussed, then you'll have to turn the worm gear a little bit still so that the holes will line up. In other words, the block will have to be moved back slightly. If you've turned the worm gear so that the block is too far back, then the worm gear hole will be forward of the hole in the seat rail. This would also not be good because it would mean that the left and right rails would not be synchronized. At this point, move the rail back so that you can reinstall the drive shaft between the motor and the worm gear. You will inevitably push the worm gear out of its support at the front, but that's okay. The important thing is to get the shaft in the support as well as in the motor. Here we see where the drive shaft and the worm gear are coming together. Usually just pushing down a little bit on the top of the drive shaft will allow it to mate with the worm gear properly. Now it's time to reinstall the bolt into the worm gear. Don't forget to put thread locker on it. Put the nut back into the 15 millimeter wrench and simply install the bolt. Slide the seat rail so that the holes in it line up with the silver metallic block. 
There was no thread locker on these threads, and I doubt that it would work since there's quite a bit of grease on the metal block parts. As I mentioned earlier, there are not many threads in that metal block, and it looks to be light metal, so be very careful not to over tighten these bolts. With the seat still upside down, reconnect the electrical cable so that you can test the mechanisms. Assuming that all went well, unplug the electrical connector and let's install the seat. Again, you'll want to put some thread locker on these bolts before you reinstall them. And you probably don't really want to tighten these down until you've got those installed in the front as well. There wasn't any thread locker on these bolts, but I would think there should be. This plastic cover just has a press nut on it that goes over that shaft and you push it down and it's on. Congratulations, your seat is now fixed. I hope you found this helpful.